You're listening to Hayes Radio Network, Cannabis Lifestyle Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm Sarah Tokes. Welcome back to another episode of Terp Talk. This week's guest, we have Desto Dub. Of course, we got my uh, co-host, Ski Moscato. What's up, what's up? And you already know, this episode is brought to you by Persepolis Brands and the Compassion Co. You can find them in your SoCal dispensaries. So, uh, Dusto, let's get in on a little background on yourself, kind of how you got into the industry and where you're at right now. Yes, yeah, sir, Ski. My name is Dusto Dub. Uh, I've been in the industry since I was 13. <laughs> 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 but no, um, uh, just being young, growing up in Watts, you know, everybody, you know, always in the flashy things when you don't grow up having flashy yeah. things or nice things. So that's what always caught my eye and then... First chance I got, you know, I got a little crew together, started hanging out. You know, we made us a little click. You know, them guys blew the fuck up. Yeah. His name Overgrowth. It was this group called Overdose. They blew the fuck up. And then ever since then, I was like, man, I got to do this for myself. And from that day forward, I started my marathon. That's awesome. So marathon what made you <laughs> what made you choose cannabis or getting into weed? Well, me, myself, I never liked school. So, like, well, like, I like school, the people part, and, like, you know, like, the network and all that. But the actual, like, working and doing all that, I didn't. So I was always interested in doing things that didn't involve school, you know. I always was, like, looking at self-made, like, people who did things without having to have an education of school. Your education is what you learn from your hands or seeing. Yeah, of course. And with that being said, I tried tattoos. I did that, conquered that. I tried clothes, I did that, I conquered that. All while doing all of these things, I smoked weed. You know what I mean? I always smoked weed the whole time. So after I built my myself up as a brand, that's when I started getting more into the cannabis end of things. And then once I got into it, you know, you have a few hookups with, like, good cannabis, bad cannabis. Not yeah. meaning just being strong or not being strong, just you want good, clean weed. You know what I mean? So. After a few, like, fails and keep on going, it just got real good, and I'm at where I'm at right now. So how is the, the business right now going for you? Um, Right now, it's it's pretty good, and I could see it having a lot more potential. But as, a far, as far as right now, it's lovely. Like, I love the fuck out of it. Like, Did the corona have any effect on it, or? The corona, it kind of it kind of just, like, separated the boy from the man. You know, because with the corona being around, it's like all of the boys stayed in the house and was scared. And all of the men kind of like, you know, went out and did what they had to do to provide. And it was like it kind of singled out and you really didn't have no competition. So the corona, what the corona did for me and my weed brand within, what, it's been a month now? Yeah, it's been about six weeks. With six yeah. weeks with the corona and my brand, I've done more than people done in two, three years. No cap. I've done more than most people brands in two or three years within six weeks. I have a lighter. <laughs> I don't think I have a lighter up here. Um, how did you, how do you feel like you did more than all those brands, you know? Was well, it like your marketing, dropping new products? My, my marketing, my network, the route I took, you know? A lot of people, like, try to go straight for the cheaper route when it comes to cannabis. Yeah. And I jumped right out. I didn't even go no cheaper route. There was no cheaper route. Like, me being a consumer myself, I smoke a certain type of brand. So I feel like why all of these years and stuff, people were, like, trying to get their brand right. All of these years, I was building relationships with people who already had the right brands. You know what I mean? And where I kind of jumped ahead was... I have a clothing line that's already right here. You feel me? All of these weed companies, they want to have clothing lines. Yeah. You know, they want to have successful clothing lines. If you have a weed company right now, you're like, man, I wish I could, like, have a clothing line that bring in a lot of bread because you hear about, oh, cookies. You know, they make so much money off of their clothes. You know, they make as much money off the clothes as they do off of the uh, strands, you know? So first thing I did was I did a collab with my boy, LB from Runts. And then once I did that collab with him on the clothing line, and it wasn't even no weed involved. We just did a clothing line because he always fucked with me. I always supported his uh, his company. We did a clothing line, and once we did that clothing line, it kind of, like, just, like, made the demand 
for my own strand super duper high. Yeah. You know what I mean? And what is that strain that you came out with? Dub Lotto. <laughs> That's an awful lot of gelato. I'm a gelato smoker. I love anything yeah, mixed no. with it. I love crosses of it. 33, 41. I even tasted a 47 before. I love all <laughs> of it. So, like, like, I already had, like, the idea for it. You know what I mean? I just didn't have, with, with doing the collab with him, it made the demand for it high to where I had to go out and do it. Yeah. Like, the demand was so high. Like, okay, put it like this. We did a pop-up. Um, my my hoodies I make on my clothing line are all limited, so we probably only made like two hundred of them. But since they were so limited and the demand for the hoodie was so high, we charged two hundred a hoodie at the pop up. Oh wow! We sold we had and we had shirts. We sold out of hoodies, and every person that bought a hoodie was asking for the strand. Damn! So it's like after that, I'm like, if you're coming here to spend two hundred dollars on a hoodie. It's like you're not tripping about paying for weed. So I didn't have to go through, oh, like, finding customers and all that. The customers were begging me to start it. Yeah. And then after that, I kind of linked with, like, I don't know. It seemed like this shit just all planned out together for itself. Because like, then after that, my roommate had a buddy up north who was, like, a great grower. And it's just, like, right around that time, he was like, hey, Dub, I got a strand I'm working on. I think you'll like it. It'll fit you. I've been working on it, and I'm like, I tried it, and I was like, bruh, this is, like, crazy. This is what I've been looking for. Yeah, and that was a, that's your double auto? Double auto, yeah. Like, he was like, bruh, like, you can have this. You feel me? This could be you. You know, I want to help you. So it's like, I got the demand. I got the strand now. Yeah. And now you just need to build the brand. Now it's time to build the brand. But I have a clothing line, so I already have designers. I already have bags. I already had everything built up. I already had designs. I already had a market. You know, I had everything. I just didn't have the strand or the demand. So once the demand came and the strand, and then the corona, like, I think a week before the corona hit, I dropped it. And then a week before the corona hit, I dropped it. Sold out one day. Your weed. One day. Okay. It, it seemed like <laughs> one day I sold out, like, I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, I'm used to selling out clothes, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, not weed. Not that's weed. just crazy. She that's... sold out in one day. So then after that, I was like, okay, this shit is crazy, you feel me? But I'm thinking, like, it might have just sold out because, like, I dropped a hoodie that day. Everybody that came to buy a hoodie yeah. bought some weed, and then they came back and bought some more weed, you feel me? So the first day I saw that, I was like, cool. So then I didn't even have an Instagram for it. So then, like, the next time I got a new batch in, which was, like, a week later, I got another batch in, I did, like, a deal. You know, I was telling you, like, it's about buying good bad weed and bad weed. Yeah. I bought some bad weed. So I'm like, fuck. Like, I took this L with buying this weed. I shouldn't have never bought it. Cool. You know what I'm going to do? Every person that buys a, buy a half, a seventh, or whatever the amount, you'll get a free eighth from me. Of that bad weed. But it wasn't or bad. Like it's just bad I'm weed. a real just, smoker. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't like these little fruit punches and <laughs> cherry punches and all that shit, you cherry know? You don't punches. like the fruity stuff. You want the more, like, pungent and, like, like yeah. earthy kind of smelling. No, I like the like smoothness, the, the takes, not the OGs. Like the ones that like, more like the yeah, creamy. Yeah, like, you know, like, strong, that pressure. This wasn't yeah. pressure. Ether. This had taste, but it didn't have that pressure. Right, Doug? You say you like your favorite strains like ether? Yeah, ether. How about that? And I've been fucking with, like, Sosa strand, gross. This is gross. Shit is crazy, you know? But I'm, I'm, I love white, white runs also, too. Those are, like, my favorite ones. That's but, crazy. So, yeah, I gave out the free weed and instantly my like I, I think I did a post because I'm a marketing genius. Yeah. I'm a marketing genius. I did a post. <laughs> he is a marketing. Genius. Okay, look, who want on my main page? Who wants free weed? Follow at that's an awful lot of gelato. Boom. Once I did that, I have a hundred thousand followers. I said free weed. They started following <laughs> boom, boom, fast. Boom, boom, boom. Like you say free weed, I'm giving y'all points. Say some free weed shit. <laughs> They are going to go crazy. And then when they got there, it wasn't free. It was like, look, you buy this, you get a free ace. So it's like, hold on. It's the same dude that be with LB. I know he got gas because nobody, everybody that's with Runts got gas. And then, you know hold on, this the clothing line dude. So that be with all the rappers. And he got some good weed. Oh, yeah. It was just a combination and shit went crazy. 
And now people are um, people just connecting dots. Lot, lot yeah, all. at this point, like I got so much shit. Like I got four, four or five different like this like delivery people that's carrying it. And you understand? Like you like four or five. That's not a lot, bro. This shit started a week ago, like not even a week ago, a month ago, a month ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So within a month, I'm already got distribution of my shit. It's already out there. The demand is high. It's just crazy. Do you have any plans for maybe working with a um, maybe a licensed brand and like doing something like that more like, on the recreational market as well? It's so crazy because oh, like a couple of days ago, I went and visited some of my friends. And I don't even be knowing this. Like when our friends, he's like, yeah, bro, you know, I, I, your shit is buzzing right now. If you want, like, I can help you get it inside the cookie store. What? Yeah. And I'm like, Crazy. what the fuck? Like, hell no. Nah. Like, like, you know, like, you know how long it takes some people to get to that level? Yeah. Like, I, I work with a lot of cannabis brands. So, like, there's certain brands, I'm not even going to drop their names, that have been trying to get in cookies for years. And it's like, they see cookies Damn. at trade shows. They'll offer, like, one gram concentrates for $3.50, and they still don't get in, into cookies. That's yeah, just one yeah. of those shops. It's like getting into like Nordstrom's or Macy's or like, um, like what's that spot? Kith over yeah, in West Hollywood. Yeah, it's like, like trying to get your clothing line inside one of these major yeah. places. That's crazy. That's crazy. And like when he's there, they like, bro, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep going. I'm ready whenever you are. But I'm like, I just don't want to jump the gun. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I do, but like I kind of want to like, you feel me? Like, yeah. Like it's early. only a month. You know what I mean? If my shit is already there. It's going to roll. Yeah. So I'm like... Just stay a national brand kind of as long as you can until, like, kind that's of... that's what I like to do. Like, even with my... Like, I'm kind of using the same thing I do with my clothing line. I can have my clothing line in stores. I can have my clothing line in different places, but it kind of takes away from it because it's, like, something that everybody can't get. And then everyone's yeah. going to be like, oh, that's still sold out. Yeah. Like, hold on. Oh, everybody, that's still sold out. Every smoke, shot. I was smoking that before he would have <laughs> had it out. So I'm like, I don't even want to, like, try to, like... You know, I want to climb. I like to enjoy the ride. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't want a lot. I don't want handouts. I want to like kind of get there. You know what I mean? I want to uh, go through the the losses, go through the trials and tribulations. You know what I mean? I don't you wanna... have to, cause that's what kind of like makes you you, and that's what builds a brand. You can't just like become a superstar, or, like a number one brand overnight by like buying followers or doing whatever people do, cause like it's not authentic. Yeah. People don't see like the struggle and, and like the heart and the passion that goes into a lot of these brands that are being built. Yeah, so you like it, I, it's going to be coming soon. Don't worry, you're going to have it in a local dispensary. But it's like right <laughs> now, I'm just enjoying this shit, just having fun with it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like checking out different strands that I want to call my own. Like that shit is beautiful. Like going to these Would people. Would you do any of your own crosses? Like Yeah, like cross one of mine with another one of mine yeah. or something. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> And another thing I wait on, like, like I, since I have my strand now and everything, I kind of, like, want to, like, get to a point where, like, I have, like, because the grower that I have, he's kind of far. Okay. So I got to get it to where you like, look, let me grow that over here closer to me at this space, but I still love you, you know what I mean? And I want to get some more going so I can just, you know, I want everything to be boom, bow, not boom, bow, bow. I want to go through all that. So it's starting to work out. It's just a slow process, but it just boomed overnight to where, like, I'm like, damn, like, right now, I'm missing out on shit. <laughs> I'm like, no, like, my phone yeah. is going crazy. Like, where you at? I'm here. People are sending me pictures. I'm like, chill, bro. Wait. You're like, chill, I'm at Turp Talk. Yeah, I'm at Turp Talk right now. You already know the vibe. <laughs> um, So do you have, like, a preference of, like, a growing method, more, like, indoor, greenhouse? Indoor. Indoor, indoor, yeah. indoor, all the way, all indoor. the time. Like, How do you ooh. feel about the other? It's cool, but I just don't like it. Don't hang up with this. It's like the other ways are fire. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's all everything is fire. All, the way you do it, they do it. But it's just my preference of things. It has to be done that yeah. way. The way I like my pressure. You know what I mean? It's like oh. How you like your car wash? Like, okay, like I can wash it in the front yard, but how I like my shit clean, you gotta go to a detail. I need armor raw. I need motherfucking the shampoo. I need air freshener. That natural shit ain't just gonna work for what I want. Yeah. You know what I mean? I need you to tweak that motherfucker up a little bit. <laughs> I feel you on that. Um so how did you kind of like find your niche? 
when it comes to like doing what you do and like where you're at right now. I, th- I feel like it's just like my life kind of built me for this. You know, like going through everything that I've like, like I done been in, at, I done been at every angle of a table. I done sat at the king chair. I done sat at the help chair. I done sat at the, at the every chair I done been at, at the table. You feel me? Yeah. So like, I know things that most people are never know because they never stepped out of that. You know, like I'm steadily climbing. So I done been like right here with the people, even if we put it in weed time, I done been with the people that only can afford this type of weed. I done been with the people that roll joints. I done been with the people that smoke bombs. You got to be with all those type of people to be good at, if it's just, less, if we talking marijuana, to be good at marijuana. You can't just be with the rappers that smoke backwoods and think you know everything. No. Yeah. Right. You got to be with every last one of them. So even if we take it out of marijuana, clothes. I done been the dude that can't afford the high price shit. I done been the dude that couldn't afford the high price shit and I had to make my shit look like the high price shit. I done been the dude that got hand-me-downs and had to still make it look new. I done been at every angle of fashion. Yeah. So that's why I'm killing it at fashion. You know what I mean? When it come to music, I done been at every angle except the top. I done been like on tour as the friend. I done been on tour with the management, helping out the management. I done been on tour with the tour with the uh, tour manager helping him out. I done not been on tour. I done been in the crowd watching people <laughs> while they on tour. I done been at home on Instagram watching. So I'm being in every angle of everything I do is what's make me great at it. And it's like, you don't think about that while you're going through shit. Like, like you like, man, I wish that everybody was playing my music. I done been like at that angle. So like I know the people that's not listening and the people that are listening. Yeah. You know? Some people just always being up here. So you only can relate to these people. I done been all through all of this. Mm-hmm. I done been with the grower. I done been with the nigga smoking the shit. I done been with the nigga that's cleaning out the fucking room after the first. Like I done been at every angle. So that's why I'm good at what I do. Yeah, so you have a more of, like, a full understanding of, like, the whole business and the plant and all that stuff. I done been with the owners while they building it up. I done been with the owners while they mo- moving on. You know, when they <laughs> took losses, I done seen them take losses. I done probably took losses with them. You yeah. Gotta, people don't understand that. Everybody just want to ask somebody and figure some shit out, watch some shit. No, you got to go through the mud if you want to be good at it. You know what I mean? Or when, you, when you're doing something, you're going to go through it and you got to get used to it. But like it's not gonna all be lovely, and if it, you don't want it to all be lovely, you don't. Anything you do, you do not want that shit to be all be good. It's like the longer you go through the bad shit, it's gonna get good and it's gonna stay good. Yeah. But if you if it's good right now, as soon as it hit bad, you are gonna be straight or it's gonna be devastating. You are gonna quit. But if you so used to the bad, when something bad happens, you gonna be like, oh, that's just a part of the game. Yeah. <laughs> and keep going. Yeah, that's what's up. That you have that um, mindset for everything. All mentality. About it. Some people get like a flat on their tire Be like man why me yeah. <laughs> I get a flat I already got a can of fucking Fix a flat in the car Cause I'm used to this Yeah You just gotta you do just what you gotta do expect that shit yeah, to happen You know what I mean <laughs> Nothing surprises me at all And when it happens I kinda love it Good or bad That's awesome So um Do you have any like Specific growers Or any favorite growers That you work with Or So look This is my My boy James (laughs) My boy James Is my favorite He's he's up in the bay Oh my god He's so hilarious Cause you gotta understand Like Okay I fuck with white people (laughs) You know what I mean I fuck with white people like the so, white white people. Like no, not white <laughs> white people, but like white people. And like me, my best friend is white, but he's from the Bay, so he like black white. Oh my god. <laughs> he don't say the nigga word, but yeah. So oh you know, god. like bro, like you know, it's funny. So he got a homie that's up in the Bay, and he's like the same way, you know, like he's hilarious. And that's James he the girl. He be like this right here, this right here, this that James Ronald right here. You ain't gonna get none <laughs> yeah. of this nowhere else. You you got you gotta go right here to get this, man. I'm telling you, it's killing everything on the market, boy. I'm like, this nigga is hilarious, but he's not playing. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just gotta step in shit to know where not to walk. You know? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I'm like, James is comedy, but he my favorite word. And then, you know, like, okay. So that's really the him and I got another my homie Mike hit Nexus cannabis. He got some he he got some shit going too. You know. But he like one of them people who like he got away to his A1 before you even know about it. 
Oh, really? You know what I mean? I'm like more like I want to see, want you to see me when I'm in the bucket, so you appreciate it when I'm in the bins. Yeah. He like, no, I'm not coming out to the bins. Is out. So that's like more how he do his shit. But he got some shit coming. But, bro, my favorite people to, from weed anything is jokes up exotics. Like they give me what I want when I need it. They know like anything that they put that jokes up stamp on. It's right in my alley. It might not be yours. It might not be yours. You know, some people like just OG. Yeah. I feel like whenever I see, <laughs> whenever I see that right there, the jokes up on any on anything, I see that jokes up. Whenever I see that jokes up right there, I know they gonna give me what I want. It's like a blue check mark on IG. N- not even that. <laughs> some people be weirdos with that blue check mark. It's like, it's like okay, it's like going to uh. It's kind of like going to Gucci. I don't give a fuck what's in this motherfucker. I like it all. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck what you say. Like, I know when I walk in this store, they're going to give me something I like. Yeah. If it's Gucci on it, I like it automatically. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, whatever mm-hmm. I see. Like, if I see the double Gs, okay, for sure. That's my type of party. Bougie. And Dub, right now, you're only, <laughs> you only sticking the flower. You're not doing any cars. You're not doing no wax. Uh, see, back again. Yeah. He asked me that last time, and I told him, like, I can't do it because I ain't been into it yet. I feel fake. You never fucked with carts or concentrates? No, no, no. I fucked okay. with them. I fucked <laughs> with them. <laughs> but I wasn't. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't my tea. So like, I didn't even really, like, you know? Yeah. Like, let's say if we just stick on carts. People would give them. I wouldn't take them serious. I'll just have them. Yeah, I mean, the thing with cartridges is, like, most of the time they're made with distillate. Distillate's made just with crude. Crude is, like, propane just mix with <laughs> weed until they can get like the extraction then they distill it a few times yeah so you get like kind of like a nasty ass taste then everybody goes in and adds back the terpenes because it has like such a bad flavor so yeah. if you were to do cartridges just do like live resin or live rosin because it's literally just putting like the wax that you dabbed from like the rig in or the, puffco in the pen. straight in the pen yeah that's what my buddy like, does that with with the next cannabis he has he doesn't put any of the shit in there yeah he literally just, just straight the like real live wax. resin it's so thick in that motherfucker yeah. and everything yeah do you follow like the alien labs are you yeah. familiar with them oh, they yeah, just they're great. yeah they just came out with like the little disposables too yeah of the live resin pens. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, but like, mm-hmm. now that I'm in this, like, okay, I'm gonna start smoking other people pens, buying mm-hmm. other pens just to see, you know, d- buying it. Then, you know, I'm gonna start dealing around with my own. But until I do that, I will never put nothing out with my name on it if I haven't did it or been around doing it for a minute. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even like, I didn't hit like, like what, what? What's the shit we was hitting with the with the the little the dabs, nuts? the whack. The puffco, yeah, about? yeah, the puffco. What you putting like, like wax and shit like that? Yeah, yeah like the puffco. Oh, like I would yeah. have to like low key be on my like binge smoke them motherfuckers yeah. before you know before you like, actually before I actually say this, this is mine and it's better than no. I haven't tasted nobody else shit. I don't right. even know what they shit feel taste like. I didn't taste everybody flower. Like I'm a flower right. enthusiast. Like I go to other places. I still buy weed. Jungle Boys, Cookies, Dr. Green Thumb. They all know my name. Before I like, yeah. they probably don't even know I got my own strand now. They just know me as going there getting weed. Out of those three, which one would you say is the best? You should get some from the <laughs> That's Okay, so look, so look, look, which ones did I say? I said Dr. Green, Green Thumbs, Thumbs, Cookies, and Jungle cookies Boys. Cookies and Jungle Boys. Which are all competitors. Okay, so look. This what about is what, Kush Factory, though? Kush Factory, I fuck with Kush Factory, too. But like, we talking about these. Those my boys. <laughs> if we going to say out of those three, I fuck with Kush Factory more. <laughs> But she said those three. Okay. Man, I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> those are my boys. That shit'll get you in trouble. Mm-hmm. Like, sorry, Ivan. Yeah. I didn't mean to ask that. My bad. My bad, brother. Like, I was high. <laughs> nah, I fuck with all those shops. That's why I'm like, that's a pretty yeah, hard decision like, okay. to make. So I'm not going to answer, but that's what I'm saying. Look, everybody got my fa- Like, different ones got my favorite strands at different times. You know what I mean? So, like, they all got each other's weed, low-key. But, it's like, some of them got my favorite strands at times. Like, for a minute, I ain't gonna lie, the Peach Cobbler and the, um, the Peach Cobbler and the Gary Payton. Yeah. I fucked that shit up. Like, I love that shit. You feel me? Yeah. But Dr. Green Thumb, that's where I go for my OG. You know, sometimes I'll be on my OG shit. I'm gonna hit the ass for the OG. But they got the cookies at Dr. Green Thumb. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So like you can get cookies and Dr. Green Thun at Dr. Green Thun. But like 
I feel you on that. Which They're one all- was the other one? Jungle Boys. Oh, but Jungle, I ain't gonna lie, Jungle Boys. I, they got the flavor. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm like, Jungle Boys is always Jungle fire. Boys got the flavor. It's like, it's like, 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 Jungle Boys is damn near like Basket Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I ba- Basket song. Robbins, you know what I mean? Like, damn, like, y'all don't got that no more? Right? It's like, once it's gone, it's gone for a minute. That's the only thing about them. But I fuck with Jungle Boys. You gotta understand, like, like some people do jungle boys, like you know, you go there, your ID, you walk in, you gotta buy this, you gotta yeah. buy that. You know, most people what most people probably go there, go there, buy like two or three different eights, smoke that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going with little pump. <laughs> <laughs> we going there like getting halves and holes of five different six, seven strands. Yeah. And smoking it all and coming back in four days. <laughs> so I'm in hell in way more of they shit than most people do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you get like, like that we're VIP smoking like experience. three fives and backwoods. You know, so like we don't can't buy H. That's one blunt. That's right. Yeah. And then even after all the shit you buy, they still gonna give you some shit that they want you to test out. So it's like Jungle Boys really be having some shit. They don't game like I'm like whoa. And then they be crossing shit with shit they already crossed. Like, fuck. Yeah, that's the thing that I love about Jungle like, Boys. Yeah, they're, they're like mad non-stop. scientists. <laughs> they're the mad scientists. They're so um, innovative when it comes to, like, all their new crosses and new strains and stuff like that. Yeah, they are. But I fuck with that. Um, what's your favorite strain that you're smoking on right now besides S- anything exotic? Scotty. The Scotty. <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> Scotty and Ethan. Really, who cultivates those ones? Uh, the Biscotti is connected. The Ether is what high fire society or something. I've never heard of fire society. Yeah, that's what's up. But um, <laughs> the Ether. Yeah, the Ether yeah, is pretty good. The Biscotti is it right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. Is that what you just smoked on right now? No, I was just smoking <laughs> on some of that. The blotto, <laughs> the best shit smoking. I know it. The blotto, I got a little bit of everything. This 12 zips is smoking too. Got some white gummies here. White gummies, shout out my boy. I just like to smoke, man. I be liking some flavor. I know, I see you came through with like a pizza box of weed. Yeah. You just about to like... have a roll off, see which one of these can roll. A... No, we not rolling <laughs> joints, we rolling backwards, brother. If you can't roll a backwood, what are you doing? It's 2020. Stop smoking joints. <laughs> yeah, come on, boy. Joints are nasty. What you gonna do? <laughs> you wanna? <laughs> 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 no, I, I need with the. You. <laughs> <laughs> I need the. <laughs> you need that like fat wood. Yeah, I, I need that. that fucking thumb full of pressure. <laughs> So when it comes to like choosing your weed or like whatever strains you want um, for your brand, what's more, like what's the most important thing? Like terpene uh, profile, growing method. Profile, smell. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie, I don't, I don't cause people grow however you want to But I just need, it's it gotta be the smell. Really? The smell is what, that's the first thing I go for, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just straight off of the turf. Straight, that's just tell me. Okay, let me now. Let me see what's in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like now, right. then I'm like, all right, motherfucker. Are you familiar with like terpenes and like what they do in weed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's just such a big question. Do you have any like um, favorite terpenes that you fuck with? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Your face. <laughs> Well, you fuck with gelato, um, so that one has more, like, the limonene, the lemon, citrus terps, more for, like, anxiety, pain. Then the myrcene, which is, like, the fruity, pungent, like, creaminess, and then you get that. You smart about this shit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's called Terp Talk. I need to have at least 30 seconds of talking terp. We terping it, then. <laughs> terp me down. You know, so <laughs> we terp. So, look. So, let's go back to the terp talk. <laughs> Yeah, so when it comes to, like, the mercy, that's that, like, kind of, like, creamy but pungent smell that you get, the one that you said is, like, kind of your favorite. Yeah. Um, that's actually, like, a rare terpene. It's rarely the most, like, abundant terpene in a strain. It's normally, like, the fifth or sixth. Yeah. But when it comes to, like, gelato, that's, like, the most abundant terpene with limonene, 
So that's why you get that like couch lock and just. So I really it. like the lime mini. That's what really be getting me. Huh? Yeah, because you like more of those like kind of fruity like but like pungent like aromas. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, but yeah, I fuck I fuck with that gelato. That smells super bomb. Definitely a couch lock effect. There's so much going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do you have any tips for people trying to get into the industry or kind of getting to where you're at? Man, you got to smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> if you want to get into something, you got to do it. Like, you feel me? Like, and you don't have to agree with me. This is just my opinion. But you got to go through it to be good at it. And that's always going to be my recipe for whatever you want to do. You know, just be around it. Jump into it. Nigga, wake up thinking about it. Just when you move, move as if... You moving for it, you know what I mean? Like, if you want to be in the weed, wake up, smoke weed. Hang out with <laughs> weed smokers. Work for a weed company, you know what I mean? Like, fucking wear weed clothes. You like, go to weed events, you feel me? Like, when you wake up in the morning, follow people that do weed on Instagram, you know? Like, and fucking apply yourself to it. Apply yourself, like. Just like, if this is what you want to do, you feel me? Like. Just go after that shit. And that's what whatever, even if it ain't where I'm trying to be at. Shit. You might trying to be somewhere I've never even thought about being. But use those recipes, you're gonna get there. For show ski. And that's for everything besides just weed. And um, that's even for terps. <laughs> you wanna get in the terp, you hang around the terp girl, terp it up, smokes, you know. <laughs> the terp queen. The terp queen. <laughs> I got a question. When do you start working? Stop? Yeah. When I pass out. You hear that? Literally when I pass out. Like I wake up and I just start getting ready for work, working, doing whatever. And then like I don't work, stop until like I get to that point where like I'm sitting down and I'm like, oh shit, it's over. That's it's it. over. You feel me? Yeah. And I still work a little bit more, but then it catch me again. I had to blunt my hand. <laughs> Everybody be in a different position. You know, it's not you know, then I'm like, okay, it's over. It's time to try to get home now. <laughs> Time to try to get home. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, you know, it's time to try to get there. That's awesome. So, um, besides weed, like, what else do you venture off in? Do you have anything coming up for 2020? Anything new? Um, Well, right now, I'm just really just, like, taking m me and my product and my brand and just trying to go to different cities and then turn different cities into distribution locations. So, like, I would, like, you know, go to, like, out of state. Like, with my clothing line, I got a pop-up plan for Atlanta. The place yeah. that I'm doing the pop-up at in Atlanta will carry my brand after the pop-up because, you know? Yeah. So, like. So, it becomes more like another retail location in yeah, a way. Yeah, you know? So, I can literally, like, do numbers independently, you know, without having to, like, be at a Macy's or be at a Tilly's, which I don't have no problem with not being, but it's just, like, I kind of want to keep my shit like kind of like controlled by me. You know, I want everything that goes out to touch my hand. When this box come in, I want to pick this box up and have them break it down and count everything. And yeah. then after they get on counting, I want to pile them in the box and ship them. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like with every article that I put out, I want to do that. And, you know, it might be not making me so big or it might be slowing me down because I'm thinking like that, but I just like that about my shit, saying that every piece of cardigan that this person or somebody wear around the world, it came from me. Yeah, and making like, sure that, like, you were the one that packed yeah. that. And it just gives well, you that I, like, peace of yeah, mind, like, too. I touched every piece, like, <laughs> like not even, even if I don't even pack it. Like, I just touched every piece, like. Like, I literally ordered these pieces myself. I didn't, like, call my assistant and be like, look, I want to order 30 or to five dozens of these from small. No, I went there. I ordered them. I went and got them out the back, gave them to them. I picked them up in my van. I counted them outside. I took them to my online shipping place. I sold it to him who brought it. You know, every piece yeah. came from me. That shit is like. You think it's going to get to a point where there's, like, counterfeit? There's what? already counterfeits. What? Already. Shout out to counterfeits. Yeah. <laughs> what? And you know, another reason, too, I started doing that, because for a minute when I had a, like a third-party shipper, I would just tell them what I want, and then they'll print it up. And then, like, I was on tour one time in, like, Denver or something, and a dude put up on me who was a fan, 
and he had on one of my shirts, and I'm like, that's not my shirt. Where you get that fake ass shirt from? Oh my God. Uh, you got a fake. Like, no, bro, this is your shirt. I ordered it off your online. I'm like, bro, stop playing with me. You didn't order that shit from me, and he really did. But it was, it was like, I told them, hey, can you print me up some orange shirts to match yeah. this hoodie? Uh-huh. And they just printed what they want. It didn't even match. So like, I had different shit running around. Oh, and I didn't wow. like that. So ever since then, I did everything. Whatever uh-huh. they shipped out, I. Gave it to them to ship out. I didn't just send them the graphics and have them printed and ship it. Yeah, you know like you I mean? want to make sure like they're not like messing with your colors. Yeah, right? yeah. So like everything is from me. <clears throat> That's crazy. And then I got like this van that I got, and I got it wrapped with like my picture and my logo on it, <laughs> and it's damn near like a fucking like monument right now because it's just bringing so like I'm selling like fucking like I'll say like probably like thirty pieces a day. And eat, none of my pieces are less than $100. Just from driving around? Not yeah. driving around, no. Just from the van. Yeah. I parked the van. Oh. And then it's awesome. like it's, people just take pictures of it. It's on their Instagram. So then when other people see it, they like, like I'm not saying all 30 are from people who coming. It'll be like a few of them would just be like, oh, I seen the van, bro. You got some shit. I know you got some shit. My boy has some shit. I seen it on the on the gram. You got something. And I'm like, yeah, you know. So yeah. I'll pull over. I'll pull up to deliver some shit in front of somebody's apartment building. <laughs> And then people will be looking outside from my music being too long. Oh, that's dub. Run downstairs and try to buy some shit. <laughs> that's so crazy. Do you like, do you do that with your weed too? And then when they buy a hoodie, what do they ask next? <laughs> I know, that's why I like, what do they ask next after oh, you buy a hoodie? Hey man, you got some of that dub lotto? You got some of that dub lotto? That famous yes, lotto. Yes, So it's just like, fuck. What's the craziest thing that's ever happened? Um, to you like while doing like deliveries or anything like oh, that. Oh yeah. So look one time shit was crazy. Like this is when I first was like the first week. I'm doing deliveries, so I pull up to like a kid in like a neighborhood. And like usually I like scope the spot out. And I like put kinda I don't go to the address. I put it to the corner to see if they gonna pull up or if they gonna walk up or they gonna come out the house, you know? Yeah. But I got distracted because I seen one of my homies and I started talking to him. So the kid kinda came out of nowhere. So then, you know, after everything is, I know whatever, boom. So then, he, I got the, I got the uh, weed in my hand. He got the money in his, and I got, he got the money in his hand. So I'm like, I like reach for the money. He like, bro, like, what you doing? Like, give me the weed. I'm like, bro, give me the money. So as soon as I grabbed the money and gave him the weed, he gr- snatched the money and ran. So now I'm, woo, let's go, running after his ass. <laughs> I like grab him when he hit by close, get close. So I grab him, he slip, I slip, boom. He get up, he grab, drop the money, drop the weed, hit the fence, and he hit like one of them old ass wood fence, like oh, boom, no. and the shit broke. So when he did that, I'm like, I'm not hitting that bitch because it's gonna collapse with me. Yeah. So then I was like, he gone. So then I just see him running on back of fences, getting on. So then I go back to my van and I'm like, okay, pick up the money. I got some of the money. You know, I got like one bag of the weed. You feel me? <laughs> So then after this, I'm like, I know his ass probably about to get picked up. The car is waiting somewhere. No, so now I'm circling. You know, oh we, we circling the car. Oh we circling gosh. the block. Boom. Boom. We circling the block. So then I see, like, two cars driving. So I kind of block the two cars. And then I look inside one car. It's like a girl and a boy. And I'm like, he ain't breathing all fast or nothing. You know, that don't look like him. So then I go to another car. It's like a little square dude <laughs> and, like a, like, a white Honda, so I'm looking in the car. It ain't nobody in the back seat. He by himself. So then I take a picture. Took a picture of the other yeah. car. So then I kind of go do a U-turn, go around the block. I see that same white car in the middle of the road with the door open, and a little kid is jumping in the whip. No. So then I hit it. Ooh. So I hit it towards the van. Ooh, I'm driving. No. I'm driving. You know, he stopped. I try to smack his shit. He go flying through the light. I barely touch. He go flying. So then now we driving around the block. I'm chasing him, but I'm in a 2004 Eco Line. My shit is not that fast. You know, he hit Vermont or something and got on and hit a corner. I was lost. I was. It was over for me. Oh but then I had his. I had his license plate number. We got the license plate. So then with the license plate, you know, I found. I caught. I text him back like, "Look, bro, I got your license plate. Don't make me go there. I'll find your house." Don't make me do this. I don't want to. He like, bro, 
I, he like, bro, I dropped the money in the weed running from you. <laughs> I'm like, stop playing with me. Bring me my bread. He like, bro, you think if I had some money, I'll be trying to snatch a half ounce and run? Like, I'll buy the shit. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm still mad, though. And then I start thinking more and more. He's like, bro, I'm kind of like you. Like, I know you used to do shit like this. Like, wow. come on, bro. Like, like that? <laughs> like that? He's like, bro. And I'm like, <laughs> I thought about it, Like, damn, I did used to do shit like this. So. That's foul. Why'd you got to fuck it? <laughs> I'm like, he lucky got me with that one. But then after that, I just thought about, like, I got half an ounce. He probably did drop the money because I picked up some money. You know, I just chunked it up. But, you know, you just got to be careful out there right Did now. Did you get all the weed back? I got, like, one of the bags. He, I don't know. He said he dropped both of them, and he probably did because bro was running for dear life. You see my big black ass chasing you. <laughs> you better hope because I'm... <laughs> and I was, I was, if I would have just grabbed that fence, it would have broke on my black ass. Like, <laughs> like, the whole wood would have just popped. Yeah. I'm sure. That's so crazy. Oh, yeah, that shit was crazy as hell. So after that happened, have you been a little more careful with your delivery? Yeah, very, 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 very careful. Do you have a team that you work with, or is it? Um, yeah, teams? yeah. It's like I got like a like a four man team, you know. Um, everybody rolls with somebody now when it's deliveries, and then besides that, the other two stay behind with me, you know. Yeah. I'm... Trapping out the van. <laughs> yeah. <too. laughs> They broke into it too. Oh huh? uh, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like it's so dangerous right now. I was picking up some merch from my clothing line, parked my van on like a busy main street, you know. But since it's Corona, nobody's out. They broke into my van. Where, like in the middle yeah. of LA? Yeah, or? like main street, like right downtown, like not even in the poor, poor part, nothing. Like on the like, had my van parked and not one of my uh, mer- uh manufacturers open for me because I needed some more stuff. And we were literally in there for like 30, 40 minutes. But since there's nobody, you know, they probably thought the van was just parked there on the street, you know, just yeah. left there to be parked. So they broke the back window, opened up the back, took some clothes, and then they broke into the front and grabbed uh, some of my tree. And it was just like, fuck, broke two windows, you know. But I was smart way back. After that, I got like bulletproof windows on the side and the front. And then in the back, I got <laughs> like bars and shit, so... So no one can get in that shit Nobody now. Can. I barely can get in that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a key. So. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. So um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch base on with any of your brands or anything like that? What's the next move? Right now, man, I'm just working on more collabs, you know. Um, want to make sure everybody follow me at Desto Dub Instagram. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Pretty much just stay tuned, man. I'm about to take this shit all the way to, like, levels that's never been taken before. You know what I mean? Like, I'm about to go crazy, like, like dumb crazy. Like, like I want to use, like, everything that I do to, like, wrap around each other as far as, like, music. Like, like drop a out, drop a mixtape, drop a strand, call it the <laughs> mixtape, hey. drop a hoodie for the mixtape. Damn. And then have a show, because if you got any one of those things, you get to a free show. You know, I'm on shit like that, so. Yeah. Marketing genius. I know. I'm like, you just, like, have the marketing. You know, like, if you fucking with the weed and you fucking with the hoodie, you might not fuck with the music. But, like, it's like you might as well get the three whole things. Or if you fuck with the music and the hoodie, you got to fuck with the weed. Or if you fuck with the weed and the music, you might as well get a hoodie. You know what I mean? So, like, when it comes to your marketing, I'm assuming, like, what, you just do it more in, like, package deals and incentivize people? And that's what gets them to want to... Buy a lot of them. Well, I just, I really, honestly, I just use the clothes to put everything else. Like, literally, like, if I, like, won a show, and on the show I say you get a free hoodie, the show will sell out. Really? Honestly. Do you give them free hoodies? Shit, I I haven't, <laughs> did, I haven't did this. I never, like, uh, you know, you I just started because, he- honestly, because I, I spent a lot of my time on tour, and, like, 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 a lot of my time on tour, but, like, within, like, the last eight months or something i haven't been on tour so i've been able to like really just market myself but, like when you're hanging out with, like high-end celebrities like their life is so fast-paced and so much that you really don't have time you're really just trying to keep up yeah you know? and you're like more involved with them instead of like focusing yeah, on, on yourself, yourself you know what i mean so like once i kind of like just started focusing on myself i just started doing way more stuff and, like i'm a real thinker so i'll think about thinking you know what i mean like 
I'm thinking about what will happen, how it happen before it even happens. So I already be, pre- you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, so that's like, I've been doing that. Like, okay, if I drop this shirt, no, nah, but then if I drop the shirt, I should drop the hoodie. But if I drop the hoodie too, I'm going to need some shorts. Okay, cool, but is it hot? No, we're going to have to do sweats. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay, how am I going to market? Like, I'll really think the whole thing through yeah. before I even do it. You know what I mean? So, I but you don't have time to do that when you always, like, okay, today we in this city. Tomorrow we in that city. Tomorrow we in. It's good because you letting people, like, people are fucking with you as a brand because you're carrying your brand everywhere. But you're not initiating a lot of stuff because you're always so busy with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you're fi- but it's fire though. Like, what? I toured Europe, like. Fucking like four times in one year. That's crazy. But not touring Europe, I'm able to build my brand and work on my stuff more. You know. Yeah, and then but you can bring your brand to Europe. Then you can bring it to Europe. And then so, like right. focus on yourself. It's just, but then like you want to, you know, you want to experience life. You know, so a lot of things you don't turn down. Yeah. But sometimes you gotta just like really just focus on your shit, and then you'll get there. You know. Then you get to go have fun. Yeah, then you get to go have fun, but you'll get to, well, you got to work first, then have fun. I'll have fun first. <laughs> I had a lot of fun, now I'm working. <laughs> That's such a mood. Like, I had all the fun, now it's time to work. What was your favorite place that you went to in Europe, like with the best weed? Amsterdam. Really? How is their weed? I get like, I don't know. Like, I went to Amsterdam out there, and then I like, like, everywhere we went, we was, like, going to, like, the fire spots, you know, like, the coffee houses. This is one place called, like, Tree House or something. Yeah. My boy, like, go there or whatever. We went there. Like, he brought us out, like, some Sherblato and some shit, like, some shit we smoked. What? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. you, you got treated, like, royalty yeah, out for there sure, for instead sure. of getting, like, the snickle friends. Yeah, instead of getting, <laughs> like, like, the bullshit that they give you. Like, no, nah, we was That getting, has, like, like, no terps. Like, I heard that their weed has, like, no terp oh, no, profile to no, it. Not at all. Not at all. Shit just dry as fuck. But, yeah. like, when we was out there, they gave us all this the shit. I mean, what else? Yeah, it was really Amsterdam. Like, they was giving us Jungle Boys. We had Jungle Boys in Paris, too. Like, what? you just got to pay, like, it's like 800 an ounce. Damn, 800. Shut up. And you don't even know if it's, like, real Jungle Boys? No, you don't. But it's in that bag. <laughs> so you like, I don't know. But yeah. you can go buy those bags in the alleys. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but, yeah, Amsterdam was the best place as far as we, hell yeah. We was going to the back of the back. Really? Did you get to, like, experience any of, like, the edible bars there? Do you fuck with edibles? No, them bitches are going to be too fucked up. What? (laughs) You just don't know how to dose yourself. That's what it is. (laughs) Like, I'm going to overdo it. Like, I remember one time I took an edible. I don't think I was in Amsterdam. I was somewhere else. Man, I started throwing up and some more shit. No. I don't know why. Like, I just, like, it was, like, you know, somebody was, like, getting me, like, yeah, bro, you want some here? And I'm eating the shit, and I'm fucking this shit up. And I went out to eat, and I'm, like, Pat, like, like now I forget that I took the edible because you yeah. know it's like chocolate or something. It's like an hour I'm like, later. What the too. fuck is wrong with me? Like, like why am I tripping right now? Like I feel like I'm about to throw up. I'm dozing off and I just yeah. Oh my gosh, all off the edible. So now you're traumatized. But traumatized. I gotta make you some terpy edibles. And- yeah, I got. I, <laughs> I low key got. I want to make some edibles because I be having a lot of shake. Really? Like a lot of good shake. Like you should make like, some edibles. Yeah, that should be fire. Like I'll be having like some fire ass shake. Like just picture shake from like one of these pounds. Oof, make some pre roll. That would be. F- Who wants a shake pre roll? You want <laughs> exactly. That's what people tell me. Like you can roll out of these. Like nah, bro, niggas gonna be eating weed. No, like, if you know, you know. You know, like I I come from like the why? Prop Two Fifteen era of cannabis, to where like we would literally roll up. I wouldn't even say it was like shake. It was just like fucking stems and trimmings for like those free joints when you go to the oh, shop. Oh yeah, the uh, girls uh, that just be. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I'm I'm traumatized. I won't smoke a, a free joint even if it's like packaged and has all the COAs and shit. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like, you don't know what goes into that shit. That's all bad. But do you have a three minutes? Okay, sorry. Okay, guys. Um, do you want to say anything before we wrap up? We have another like three minutes Love left. Shout out. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate <laughs> y'all. Appreciate my boy. Mar. Thank you for having me. We in this bitch. Fuck with your boy. Shout out <laughs> Runs Gang. Let's go. Do you want to say anything, Ski? Before we sign out, you already know. Been wearing my my boys 
Sweaters since day one. You see I started him. here. You see him. <laughs> He's been he shouting you out since day one. He says Desto yeah. Dub every time before we yeah. sign off. Yes, sir, Ski. Awesome, guys. Uh, hey, hold on. Hey, Bert. <laughs> Take some Awesome, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Terp Talk with Desto Dub. Again, this episode was brought to you by Persepolis Brand. You can find them in your SoCal dispensaries. Follow us at Terp Talk CA. We got some bomb-ass content cooking up for you guys. Uh, so just make sure to follow us, and we'll see you soon.